Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled Karen makes an actual bomb threat on a commercial plane. So I just started my shift and I was feeling good. I had a good dinner, all my good partners were on shift, and I was jamming out to my favorite Backstreet Boys track in my car. Then it happened. Dispatch sends out a call about a disturbance at a local coffee shop in my area. So I take the call and zoom on over. I pull up and there she is, Karen. I take one step out of my patrol car and she basically runs up to me. Now, Karen was 42 years old with that really short haircut and I did notice she had a big red mark on her cheek. Ma'am, is everything all right? Thank goodness you're here. I was just attacked by a crazy woman in the coffee shop. Okay, where is she? Karen points to a woman in the shop. I tell her to wait outside. She doesn't and I request an additional deputy to come out. I walk inside and see a young woman who is very angry and very pregnant. I would have to say like seven months maybe. She's sitting at the table on her phone. I approach her and ask her what happened. The pregnant lady says, so I'm in here getting a coffee just minding my business when that lady, she points at Karen, walks up to me and starts touching my belly. I ask her to stop, but she keeps touching me. That's when the barista sets my coffee down for me and that woman takes it off the counter, hands it back to the barista and says it's illegal to sell coffee to a pregnant woman. Then she starts touching my belly again saying that I'm a bad mom. I ask her to leave me alone and stop touching me. She then tells me that she's a mother and that it's okay. She got really rough with touching my belly and I got scared. When I tried to walk away, she wouldn't stop, so I slapped that woman to get her to leave me alone. I look at Karen, who is standing by the door, rolling her eyes as the pregnant lady was telling her story. My partner shows up and walks up to me. Now, my partner is a no BS, short, southern, corn-fed, mud-raised woman. I asked her to hold it down out here. I talked to the manager and several employees behind the bar. They all confirm what pregnant lady said and the manager even brought me back into the office and showed me the security footage. All of it confirms pregnant lady's story and on the camera it looked like Karen was getting aggressive with the pregnant lady because pregnant lady tried to walk away and Karen wouldn't let go of her stomach. I walk out to pregnant lady. Ma'am, do you want to press charges? Yes, please. I walk over to Karen. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you to turn around and place your hands behind your back. What? You're under arrest. Side note, in my state, you can be arrested for intentional and unlawful touching of someone. Since Karen was both aggressive and kept touching this pregnant lady, she broke the law. You can't arrest me. It's not illegal to touch a pregnant woman. You should arrest the employees of this place. They were giving coffee to a pregnant woman, endangering the child. Ma'am, no, you can't touch someone without their permission, pregnant or not. Second, there's no law that says a pregnant woman can't drink coffee. So please turn around and place your hands behind your back. No, I'm not getting arrested. I'm leaving. I have to get home to my children. Karen turns to leave the store and my partner steps in front of her with a try me look on her face. Karen stops dead in her tracks. I took that moment to snatch her hands and put on a pair of cuffs. Karen loses it. She starts trying to get away and screams. She's flailing so hard that she knocks off my body camera. I have to pick her up and carry her to my patrol car. When I get there, my partner opens the door, but Karen actually puts her feet on the panel to stop me from putting her in. My, <laughs> my partner rolls her eyes, grabs her taser, and zaps her leg. Karen shrieks and finally gets in the car. My partner, the saint that she is, says she'll do the paperwork while I take Karen to jail. So the whole ride, I'm getting told how I need to watch my back, how she knows the sheriff, how I'm going to lose my job, and how I have no idea who she is. I get her to the jail and she starts going off about her rights. She needs to talk to a lawyer and she needs to be released right now. The jail staff was looking at me with that, what unholy nightmare did you bring us stare? So I did my report and realized I still have nine hours on shift. Luckily, the rest of the night wasn't that bad. I'm guessing the reason why she knows the sheriff is because she's constantly getting arrested for touching pregnant ladies. You know, if anyone would respect no means no, you would expect it to be other women. Our next Reddit post is from Aslan's Girl. Backstory, I'm also a member of the subreddit r slash raised by narcissists, so I am very aware of my parents, particularly my dad being less than ideal. 
but this one shook me to the core when I learned it because of its sheer effect on my life. So anyway, on to the story. Ever since I can remember, anytime I would drink milk or eat ice cream, I would get a terrible stomach ache and diarrhea. We went out to eat a lot and being a little kid, my parents would order me milk to drink, give me mac and cheese, and then ice cream for dessert, which would result in my having to make the customary trip to the bathroom in terrible pain and explosive diarrhea every single time. It got to the point where my parents started teasing me about wanting to see the bathroom and poop in it wherever we went. I would also have the same problem after lunch at school until one of my teachers accused me of making excuses to get out of class at the same time every day. It was awful. I was just told that I had the family stomach and that I needed to deal with it. So fast forward to high school. This is still going on and we go out to dinner with a new friend of my mom's who says that she's lactose intolerant and being the very curious person that I am, I ask her about it because I've heard of it before but never understood what it was or what the symptoms were. She tells me that she experiences terrible gas pains and diarrhea if she drinks milk or has a lot of dairy. At this point, my ears perk up and I'm like, you mean that's not normal? And I start thinking that maybe I am lactose intolerant too. So I start doing a little bit of experimenting and avoid milk for a few weeks. And guess what? No more stomach aches. So I tell my parents that I think that I may be lactose intolerant and my dad, ever the gaslighter, says, No, you're not. You're just saying that for the attention. So I go back to thinking that I'm not lactose intolerant for the next several years and go back to having the stomach problems. Fast forward again to college. I run into a few new people that are lactose intolerant and being recently freed from the ironclad controlling nature of my father, I decided to actually research it for myself and do some experimenting again. So I researched and found that I have all the classic symptoms of lactose intolerance and experiment by not just avoiding dairy, but actually going to the store and buying the lactose pills that help you digest lactose and taking them anytime I drank milk or ate ice cream. Guess what? It helped. No more gas pains and constant diarrhea. So I go home and this is the conversation I had with my parents. Hey, mom and dad, so I'm pretty sure that I'm lactose intolerant because I have all the symptoms and I've been using the lactose pills when I eat dairy and they've been helping. You're not lactose intolerant. You're just saying that to get a tint. Then my mom interrupts my dad. Oh, I know that you're lactose intolerant. You have been since you were born. You had to have soy formula when you were a baby because if you had dairy formula, you projectile vomited everywhere. What? Oh, I've always known that you were lactose intolerant. I just didn't want to tell you because I didn't think it would make any difference and I thought you would use it to get attention. I was speechless. I couldn't believe it. I had literally been lactose intolerant since birth and they had never told me and just let me suffer. Here's the kicker though. After hearing from my mom that I was lactose intolerant from birth, my father wholeheartedly accepted it and even started bragging to other people that I was lactose intolerant and loudly asking me if I wanted to drink the lactose-free milk that his friend's daughter was drinking because she's lactose intolerant too. My dad's behavior is and always will be very confusing to me, but I hope this was entertaining to read. Let me know if you want me to share more stories like this from my upbringing, as this was pretty cathartic. Thanks for reading this far. So, this might be a totally crazy thought, but if your own child is in constant pain and sick, then maybe that is a good reason to seek attention. <coughs> Mom, please help. My skin is covered in open, oozing sores, and I'm bleeding out of every orifice. I think I need to see the doctor. Oh, stop being such an attention whore. My travel to Sundance Fest has been delayed because of a privileged white lady who pulled some stunt. The plane was closed and about to leave when a woman approached the gate. She'd been chilling in the lounge and missed her flight, was told she would be on the next one. Her bag would have met her in the next airport. She was not having it. She's apparently an elite member and frequent flyer. She demanded her bag be taken off the plane and she be let on. She was told no. Someone wasn't used to being told no. She threatened the gate staff. They wouldn't budge. American air staff were great, but they were not taking white lady BS. She had one move left. She knew it would work. She mustered all her drama and said the words, There's a bomb in my bag. 
So her bag was indeed taken off the plane. She was perp walked across the tarmac to the cop car. The plane was cleared. Bomb squad had to sweep. TSA, bomb squad, cops had to do the whole safety routine. F privilege. She thought having her bag on the same flight as her was more important than the hundred something other folks with places to be. The family missing a funeral. The folks missing career ops at Sundance. I hope she goes on a no-fly list. The area's been evacuated. Here's a picture of the bomb squad. Then, later, this was posted on the news. A portion of Sky Harbor's Terminal 4 was evacuated Friday evening after a woman allegedly made a false terrorism report, according to the Phoenix Police Department. And then someone replies, My mom was working that flight as one of the gate agents. It was absolutely crazy and an overreaction from the woman who said, Well, that's fine. I have a bomb in my bag anyway. She's been banned from the airport as well as their accompanying airlines and airports they connect to. Well, <laughs> despite the fact that that is quite possibly the dumbest story I've ever heard, you have to admit, it worked. She got her bag off. Our next Reddit post is from Himabi. So just down the road from my house is a decent sized playground with a two to three foot fence over it, meaning smaller kids have to use the gate where older and bigger ones are able to climb over as long as they get a leg up. It's only got vertical bars, meaning no footholds, and the top is all thin prongs, meaning you can't really rest your hands on it without getting stabbed. Anyway, the park is very popular with the children in the area and is always very crowded and busy, but that just makes it more fun, as it means they can make more friends. Recently, however, I've been hearing about a particular family who have been rather rude and tend to push away other people when they use the park. There's an entitled mom and entitled dad and two entitled kids, both boys, and I don't know nor do I care how old they are, and I hadn't met any of them until today. Thursdays are the days I get to see my niece and nephew and I cherish them. I don't have kids of my own, but if they turned out like my niece and nephew then I would be an extremely happy dad. Anyway, today, they both decided that they wanted to go to the playground and play on the swings and I could always use the fresh air so I took them down. Straight away, I noticed the playground was very empty and there were only two kids there so I went over and let my niece and nephew run over to the park while I walked there myself. I saw they were having some issues getting the gate open. The gate has a sliding lock so it doesn't swing open in the wind. But I knew they were both capable of opening it so I was curious if they were just messing around. As I got closer, I saw that someone had put a padlock on the gate to stop it being opened, and straight away I assumed it was one of the two kids in the park who just so happened to be the entitled kids. I asked them to come and open the gate so that we could come in, but they told me they didn't have it on them and that we needed to go away. I scoffed and lifted my niece and nephew over the fence and into the park and they both ran off to their swings. I stayed outside because there's no way I was climbing over the fence in skinny jeans. I couldn't even bend down properly. After around 20 minutes of watching the children playing, I got a text from my sister saying that dinner was ready and that we needed to go back and eat. So I called over my niece and nephew to come to the fence so I could lift them over to go home. And I couldn't do it. They were both too heavy to get a proper grip and lift on. I asked the entitled kids if they knew who put the lock on the gate and they once again were of no help. I explained that if they didn't tell me who locked the gate, then they would probably be stuck here because I can't go and fetch them to open it. They laughed and then proceeded to climb over the fence as a pair and then ran over to one of the houses up the road. I wanted to follow them to potentially ask their parents, but I couldn't leave my niece and nephew alone, so I called my sister. This is how I explained it. Uh, hey sis, I need your help. You didn't lose the kids, did you? No, no, come down to the playground please, I'll explain when you get here. Just tell me now, I'm not coming all the way over there for nothing. What's going on? The kids are stuck in the park. I need your help getting them over the fence. I can't climb it and can't lift them out. Use the gate? Someone locked it. There's a big padlock on it. What? I'll be there in a few minutes. Hold on. Once I'd hung up, I looked back towards the house that the two kids ran to and I saw them coming back. Parents in tow. I assumed they were coming to help. Boy was I wrong. All four of them walked up to me and I immediately got an earful before I could even speak. My children were using this park. How dare you come over and disturb them. Then you threatened to lock my kids here all night. You're lucky we haven't called the police. I'm sorry. This is a public playground. I just asked if your sons knew who locked the gate. I did. What's it to you? Well, can you unlock it? And I'm almost certain you're not allowed to do this. 
The entitled dad proceeds to unlock the gate and let my niece and nephew out, only for him to go right back to locking it. We lock it so our kids can enjoy it without any bratty children coming over and disturbing them. Now, we would appreciate it if you stayed off the playground from now on. I knew this wasn't worth my time, and there wasn't a lot I could do. So I took my niece and nephew home, and that was that. We didn't go back, but I'm going to go back tomorrow and see if it's still locked or not. I'll post an edit when I know. Edit. I woke up 30 minutes early today to give me time to go check the gate before I leave for work. And it was still locked, so I called the non-emergency number and told the cops my details and what I knew about the family and left it with them. I'll post another update after work. Edit 2. Oh boy have I got some news. So on my way home from work, I stopped by the gate once again and the padlock was actually gone. I'll get to what happened in a jiffy, but anyway, I skipped my way down the road knowing I had done the neighborhood a service only to hear the undeniable voice of an entitled parent from their front door. It was the entitled dad, ready to give me an earful. Oi, dickhead, are you the butthole that called the cops on us? We had to take our effing lock off because of you. I'm not apologizing. You were potentially putting people in risk and also trying to privatize a public place. Both are crimes, so I called the police, and I'd happily do it again. You can't do anything without the police. You're pathetic. Don't wind me up, mate, because I'll make you effing suffer. Want me to call the police right now for threatening me? I pull out my phone. The entitled dad then proceeds to close the door and give me the finger through the window. So I stroll back home, and I only looked over my shoulder twice. If they ever try this again, I'm sure you could fix it by escalating the language you use. Hello, police? This guy is locking children in the park and won't let them leave. Please send help! I'm quite certain that the police would give that entitled dad more than a stern talking to. That was r slash entitled parents, and if you like my video, then please let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow.